Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. I've been making a few ornaments as we're getting uh, closer to uh, Christmas and I've got them on a playlist. If you haven't seen it, look at the the little icon up above with an eye information icon. You can click on that, that playlist. But I want to talk to you today about all the little tips and tricks about after you turn the ornament. Things about making hangers, how you package them, how you finish them, how do you detail them. A little bit about ornament stands, how do you, how do you sign your work. Uh, and, and more. So let's get going. We're going to start talking about hangers first and we're going to talk about screw eyes. Uh, you get them in different sizes. Get the smallest size you can. Uh, they'll look a lot better. I'll have a link to uh, Peachtree Woodworking in the description, but they have a really good buy. You can buy 200 of them for 200, uh, 200 for two dollars and they're in a very very small size. Uh, put a wad of them around a rare earth magnet. You don't have to worry about them uh, sliding around in, in your box or can or wherever. Uh, so that's a little tip. Uh, another tip is uh, put them in a little pill bottle. Glue the sample size on the outside. Then you know when you have different sizes, you'll know what they look like, and you also know what you'll know what color, whether they're they're brass, uh, gold, or uh, silver, uh, nickel. Here's an example of two similar ornaments with two different sizes. The larger size on the right just appears to be a little clunkier than the one uh, on the left. Here's an ornament I got at a gift exchange that had a uh, cup hook on it, which, you know, it makes it convenient to hang on a tree, but I just thought it was way too out of proportion to, to you know, look, at, look attractive. I think they were just better alternatives, and I think it detracted from the lovely ornament. Now here's an alternative to using screw eyes if your ornament lends itself to it, and that's just drilling a small hole uh, through it, uh, one one sixteenth of an inch, and using that small ribbon. Maybe you need a larger hole if you use a larger ribbon, but uh, that can be very elegant as well. You can also make your own screw eyes. I got this tip from Rick Morris of Rick uh, Rick Turns. You get some jewelry wire from your craft store, maybe 20, 20 gauge like this brass color. I think it's about three dollars for uh, a long spool. Cut you off about a two inch length, fold it. It works better if you put it in a vise like uh, Rick illustrates, but if you're out somewhere demonstrating or you want to show it, you can also use it in a pair of uh, pliers. And just put a little hook out of a bent nail or an open cup hook and slowly twist giving it some pull tension. When it finishes, it just snaps off. I find the best way to put in a screw eye is, is do a starter hole first with your birdcage awl. Then use a pin vise that holds a very tiny bit appropriate, appropriate for your particular uh, screw eye. And you, you put that in that starter hole and you just spin it in. These are not very expensive. If you get the drill bits, I suppose you could just put it in a stick and turn that, but uh, this has a nice uh, spinning rear end so you can put it in your palm and just, just twist it. Uh, and then that, that screw eye should go in without too much trouble. If you try to put in a screw eye without drilling that hole, you run the risk of it snapping off. It tends to snap off and you'll get it so you can't turn it very far and then that's what happens. Uh, it also helps if you have a pair of pliers where you can uh, uh, turn it if, if necessary, it's much easier on your hands. Drilling the ornament on the lathe is always the easiest if the head of the ornament is, is toward the tailstock. But if you have to do it off, off the lathe, uh, you can certainly do it with a pen vise. I find uh, these electric drills generally don't work very well with small drill bits. Uh, this bit right here, for example, that will fit in my Jacob's chuck on my, on my uh, lathe. Uh, this particular drill bit won't be held in here because it's this just won't hold anything that small. Neither, neither will the one on my drill press. Now, an option I found is you can buy these 16th inch uh, drill bits like this with the uh, hexagonal, hexagonal uh, uh, shank that will easily fit in your drill bit. And so if the 16th inch is what you need, then by all means you can pick one of these up at your home development stores and, and that will certainly work better than struggling with it on your drill press if your drill press doesn't work. It won't, won't hold one that small. Instead of ribbon, here's an interesting uh, hook of inexpensive metal. I got these at my local chain grocery store. 
Uh, they were very inexpensive, a couple of dollars for oh I don't know a number of these a number of these things. Um, along that line, here's one that I uh, a, a ornament that I got at a gift swap, and the individual used some copper wire and made a very nice, attractive hanger and used his la laser engraved uh, uh, logo on it. So that's an interesting uh, approach. When you drill a hole, Brian Sinclair pointed out that uh, the best, uh, one of our viewers, one of the best things to do is support it with a piece of wood so you don't have any blowout on the back side. But uh, just, as I said, just drilling a hole and putting a ribbon in it can make a very, very nice uh, look, I think, which I actually prefer to the, to the screw eyes. And then you just uh, clip clip the waist. Let's talk about ribbon. I generally like to put a little piece of uh, this one sixteenth inch ribbon. Uh, it's getting it seems like increasingly hard to find, but uh, I get a roll of it in either silver or gold for a couple of bucks from Hobby Lobby. I have not been able to find it at, at Michael's. They used to have some uh, that had gold and silver and red, but they they discontinued it. Now again, that's sixteenth inch. You can get from. Uh, Michaels, you can get this one eighth inch, and you can get some pretty colors. I just don't find that one eighth inch for me for smaller ornaments. I just don't think looks quite as nice. But uh, that's that's personal choice. Uh, here's an example of it on this chickadee compared to the the sixteenth inch. But you can't get it in red, and that's uh, that's a, certainly a plus. Let's talk about signing our work on this uh, uh, small work. It's it's sometimes a bit of a challenge. You have to be creative on these little chickadees. Works fine signing on the bottom. That doesn't work so well on these spheres, uh, but I was able to sign it here. Uh, here's a few pictures of some of the ornaments and where I've signed them. You can use any number of different pens. Sharpies don't tend to work as well because they're not long lasting. Uh, they're not permanent. There are some metallic gel pens that can work. Uh, you can get them in different colors such as silver or, or gold. Uh, uh, here's one in red. Uh, you can get archival pens uh, which are acid free, will last a long time. You can get them in black. So use a very, very fine point. For this one, example, uh, for example, uh, this Prisma color, I think it's uh, a point, uh, point one is the size, and it's just really, really, really tiny. Detail matters uh, on these small items because people want to. You hand it to them, or they pull it out of a box that's close to their eye. They look at it, uh, and little things. For example, uh, a little bird on a perch can add a lot of detail to a birdhouse ornament. I've got to warn you though; they're getting harder to find and they tend to be very fragile but it can be a nice detail but it's not an essential detail as you can see here I've seen people that that will use toothpicks for perches which uh, you know if that's the way you want to do it and that's what you enjoy it you know I won't knock it but I I think taking the time to turn a little uh, a little perch with a knob on it uh, especially if you have a little scrap of exotic or something just adds a very nice uh, detail uh, if you got some brass rod, maybe some some rod you're using for ornament stands, um, this can make a nice little little detail on, on a perch, just because it's a little different. Little, put a little piece of bra brass on there, and it's it's fast and and, and easy. Uh, puff paint. When you're making snowmen, uh, the puff paint is is an acrylic paint that's uh, used on t-shirts, but you can actually draw out the nose of your frosty snowman and make it look like a carrot. Uh, you can use it for buttons or for eyes and give it some three-dimensional look. I would not use it for the mouth. A little smaller dot is easier to control and tends to, to look better. This is only about less than a buck on uh, for a bottle. I've had these bottles for nine years and I haven't used them up yet because I only use them on frosty snowmen. Um, other attention to detail uh, could be, you know, the roof on a uh, birdhouse ornament. Uh, making shingles, but don't make them regular. Make them a little bit irregular because that's life. Uh, dyeing can give a nice effect. Uh, coloring in it, this, this balloon can look nice, but you got to be careful. Uh, again, attention to detail. 
Uh, I used a magic marker, but while it was still wet, I sprayed some uh, shellac on it and it caused it to, to run. Uh, here's another little detail, is the texturing and, and these little burn lines on the gondola. Uh, again, just small, small little details that add a nice touch that aren't uh, particularly difficult. These handbells. Here's uh, uh, one. It doesn't move, uh, but it's a nice little detail. You could make your handbell without it, but it, it's nice. Someone else that uh, I got this from at a gift swap uh, even went to the trouble of putting a little piece of uh, fine wire and tiny little and fasten it to a lot of little clapper, and it actually little uh, rattles and has some movement. So that's a very very nice nice detail. One aspect of detail is, is the weight. A uh, general rule of thumb is they should not weigh more than about two ounces or they tend to weigh the tree down. These all fall within a pretty narrow range. This is the lightest one, uh, seven tenths of an ounce. Uh, these others vary from about 1.1 uh, 1 to about 1.6. This is solid. Uh, this is solid. Uh, this is hollowed, but it's a little larger, so there's not a great deal of difference between these two. This has been drilled out, but it's fairly heavy. I think this is the heaviest of the group at about 1.6 uh, 6, 6 ounces. 1.6 ounces. Let's talk about finishing briefly. I tend to use a friction polish, uh, so for example, like Hut or Mylan's or or uh, Captain Eddie's uh, Obi Shine juice, uh, generally shellac based. That, that tends to make them shiny enough and, and it's very quick doing it on the lathe. Before I put on that, I like to put on some type of abrasive wax such as Triple E or Yorkshire Grit, which is available some, some places more readily, but here, uh, Scratch, Dr. Kirk's Scratch Free EEE. -E -E. uh, these are similar products uh, to, to just make them nice and uh, really a shiny, shiny finish. When it comes to glue, uh, personally I tend to avoid uh, CA because for some things because it does get brittle. For example, on these little halos, uh, CA has failed me several times, so I tend to use carpenter's glue, put a little coat uh, on the halo, and, and almost let it dry to fill in the pores and suck in because it's ingrain on ingrain glue. Uh, but I find the carpenter's glue tends to work uh, best for me. Okay, let's talk about ornament stands. They come in all sizes and shapes, and, and size matters. If you've got a very tall ornament, you need a very tall stand. Uh, consider if you're giving these away, or sometimes even if you're selling them, that an ornament stand, for a very low cost, can add a great deal of value because it, it can allow in the, uh, the recipient to uh, set this out all year long. Uh, if you make them, uh, you can buy the brass rod. Some people advocate using a uh, welding or brass uh, brazing rod. Uh, I understand it's a little hot, harder and, and not, not so pretty, but uh, that's an option. Uh, if you do make a stand, I don't know if you can see this one in the back here, don't feel like you've got to drill your hole in the middle. Have it come out from the side. Here's an example of a uh, a base style designed by Ashley Harwood which is very elegant but the problem with this kind of base is you do have to drill a larger hole and put some type of lead weight in it or it doesn't give it enough stability so well, I, I generally prefer to just uh, buy a large number of stands if you get a group buy you can get these fairly inexpensive and and brass is not cheap and this is generally brass plate um, so those are all options uh, you can get three ornament stands, four ornament stands. They're a very nice option for your house or if you've got somebody that wants to get several of these. All right, we're getting down to our last step, and that's packaging. Let me just show you a few little tricks. Uh, I do a lot of these angel ornaments. I tend to put them in a snack bag uh, with a business card sometimes uh, and a little, uh, little Bible verse. That's one technique. These little bitty bags you can pick up inexpensively. They make uh, they're nice also. Tissue paper, lots of tissue paper around Christmas time. White's okay, but you can get green and red and and so on. I found a little trick with a business card that if you just uh, uh, staple a hole, uh, put a hole in it like that, you can put a, a ribbon through it and tie it. And actually, in many instances, you know you can put a little cut a little slot in the side. You can slide these on to to something, uh, which is a, a handy little trick. Uh, plastic cartons. I use get these out of instant tea. They don't get the round ones anymore. They tend to be kind of a uh, rectangular type. But for certain types of ornaments, such as the long finial ornaments, uh, wrap it up with a piece of tissue paper 
and that can protect it uh, in shipping or, or rough handling. Uh, if you've got a larger ornament like this, uh, tennis can uh, containers. Now, if you don't play tennis, just find the nearest tennis courts, look at the track, do some dumpster diving in the trash can, and you, I guarantee you, you'll find lots of these. But this tends to work very well for the larger ornaments. And again, just put a little, uh, put a little tissue uh, paper around it. Okay, I hope you got something out of this video. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and you'll get notified when there's new videos. I do a new video every Saturday. Uh, excuse me, I generally release one every Friday morning at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, but occasionally I, I produce another one. So if you enjoyed it, subscribe.